All right, so let's get to it. We're starting off with uh, quick Ableton Live tips. We're going to go over key commands, sends, and automation. Okay, I'm going to treat you guys as if you were kind of an intern starting out here. This is the kind of stuff that I would try to talk to my interns about. Um, sometimes they're setting up a project for me, and I really like to stay organized. Staying organized is very important. If, if you notice here, at a glance, you can kind of tell where things are. The yellows are the choruses. You can tell that there's three choruses. The blue is the first verse. Green is the second verse. It's not blue because this is a feature verse. These green at the, at the bottom are some of the ad-libs. Okay, of course, I have uh, my instrumentals up top, and even those are grouped up into drums and bass and some of the other instruments. And then up here, I have a YouTube instrumental. That was the original instrumental. And then at the top, I just have a, a quick structure just in case I'm zoomed in on something and I can't see where the yellow and the blue of the, the vocals are. That'll kind of still give me an idea of where the choruses are, where the verses are, etc. Okay. Use the grid to your advantage. The grid is extremely useful. The grid uh, in Ableton, if you look in the back, everything kind of locks to this grid. So you can tell how many bars are in something. Let me zoom in. Key command plus and minus on the top right of the keyboard. Okay. You can see how the grid here shows 33, 34, 35. Each one of these is a bar. So that's one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars. Really easy to kind of get around. If I right click adaptive grid, I have it set to narrow. So as I zoom in and zoom out, the grid kind of adjusts for that. So as I go in, it's more of a, you know, I have fine tuned options. If you need to adjust that, another key command, uh, command one and two, will kind of zoom in and zoom out for the grid. So you see the selection here, kind of getting more fine. There you go. Really quick, easy key commands that you guys should know. All right, let's go over uh, copy, paste, duplicate. So instead of doing multiple takes of the chorus, something that's really easy is to make sure you get the chorus perfect the first time, okay? So I'm gonna delete this third chorus. Let me see, I'm gonna delete these uh, little markers here. I don't need those right now. This is a track called Never Switch by Ty, featuring Reese Yolo and Sean Smith. Let me give you a little snippet of it real quick before I continue. Okay, so let's say you get the chorus done perfectly. Um, you really like how it is. You can always highlight, all right, I'm going to select it, drag this over. If you hold down the option button, you see this little plus show up next to the mouse. That means you're copying it over. If I let go, it drops it into place. Command Z to undo. You can also, again, highlight that selection. All right, Command C to copy. And if you line your mouse up to the right spot, so like, uh, what, a few bars, it's the same one block ahead. So if I want to paste it right here at this 81 bar mark, one block before it, paste, paste it right to where I need it to go, okay? Actually, I'll leave that there. So let me zoom in. On the chorus, I have these O's. Tech, it's about respect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you see how we're doing the same O four times. So instead of recording and then dragging it over and trying to find where you want it again and again, making sure you uh, hold down the right buttons, you can always just duplicate. So if I make the selection that I want, so this is four of these blocks, one, two, three, four of these blocks, I can command D and just paste them exactly where they need to be. Same thing with, uh, let me see, going to undo that. Same thing with dropping uh, the entire chorus. So if I have uh, the right selection done like this, I can do command D, duplicate it over to the third chorus. So it makes things a lot quicker if you know where you're going to be placing stuff. So if you know you want like maybe like a, um, a third verse, I could always uh, copy this, duplicate it over, 
boom, I know that this is the same amount of space as the second verse, so we're ready to go. I might have to do that same thing with the instrumental as well. All right, I'm going to undo that. Some quick, quick, fast key commands. Okay, next up, we're going to do Command E. Let me uh, zoom in. All right, so you notice how I really have his vocal chopped up here, Ty's main verse. Oh, let me solo this, or unsolo. Never, I ain't never switch on the set. I'm popping shit, I don't need a vest Cause I know these niggas won't shoot back A head shot, a head look different My A lot of high-end studios, in addition to compression Or even instead of compression What they'll do is they'll manually adjust a lot of these vocal takes So let me drag that out and kind of even it out You'll notice how some parts are a little louder or quieter than others So obviously, maybe this second half is a little, uh, a little louder so I'm going to make this selection po point right here. If I do Command E, then it separates it into multiple selections. So same thing here. I'm going to, uh, again, adjust the grid. Command 1. All right. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So I can highlight this selection. Command E will separate this selection. So then I can do uh, Shift, command, uh, Shift Tab. Go into this uh, clip view here. And I can increase the clip gain. Let me see, and then this later, uh, later part, I, maybe I can turn that down. I can specifically, let me zoom in a bit more. Again, I can make this selection, Command E, select this clip, turn down that clip slightly, Command E, turn down that clip slightly, all right? Um, if you press A, you're switching on and off, like the, the, uh, the automation view, so it shows all the automations. If the, make sure the automation view is off, so it looks like this, and you'll see these little... Uh, these little fade markers at the top, so I can kind of fade it just to make sure that everything looks a bit smooth. You don't want it to be uh, like a quick jump if you're making a big change. So let's say this part was a bit louder. You don't want this big jump right here in volume. It's going to be really noticeable. Maybe you want to kind of smooth it out like that. All right, I'll, that was just to demonstrate. I'm going to undo this. All right, but it really helps out. Just a quick other little tip really helps out if uh, you have some quieter parts in your mix. If your vocalist is a little bit inconsistent, you can go in there and level it out manually. It really helps out with compression. You don't have to compress as much. Um, in addition to that, you might also kind of level out or uh, move some of the ad-libs and doubles around. We'll get into that later. But there's other reasons why you might want to make a whole bunch of these little, uh, little kind of uh, cuts and edits using Command-E. All right. Uh, command T to make a new track. So anywhere I have selected, let's say I have this tie verse selected, Command T to make a new audio track here. Shift Command T makes a new MIDI track. All right, I'm going to undo those. I'm going to click clip tab. Uh, if you do, we're going to click on the returns over here. Shift, I mean, uh, Option Command T creates a new return track over here. So now I have a new empty return track. What are return tracks? We're going to go over that in just a second as well. Let's see what else. Uh, this is a key command that I found out recently, actually, within the past six months or so, and I have been nonstop using it ever since I realized what it was. I was clicking these buttons by mistake just by uh, clicking around on my keyboard, but once I realized which, which buttons I was clicking, it made such a difference, which is, uh, you can see up at the top, W and H up here. You can click these buttons as well, or just click W and H on your keyboard. What that does is moves your whole project down into the width and the height of your screen size. So let's say you're really zoomed in on something. Let's say you're making really fine edits uh, to, to the vocal, and you're, you're cutting stuff up, and you're, and you're working. And then you want to see the big picture. You can click uh, W. Boom, now you see the whole width of the track. Click H, now you see the whole height of the track, and it kind of evens everything out, so everything's roughly the same length, or uh, width and height. And you can click these buttons again to kind of undo, so H and W again, boom, I'm right back to where I was. Really great key commands. Okay, so as you're, as you're kind of finishing up your project, a few things we want to do. Uh, Command S, of course, would be save, like in most programs. Shift Command S is save live set as, which I think is even more important, okay? So as you can see here, I really try to stress this to my interns or people I'm teaching beginning out. 
save a lot of versions. If you're making big changes, go from version one to two to three. If you're going from small, if you're doing small changes, maybe do version 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, and label what you're doing. So version three, I added a feature. So that's a big jump from two to three. I made a big change. I added a feature and I just labeled it feature. Maybe if you make a performance version, this was an Instagram, Instagram performance version, or if you make an instrumental, or if you start mastering, you can put start, started mastering or finished master or uh, just help yourself label so you understand where you're at. This also helps if you or the artist that you're working with really like something you did in an earlier version of the track, you have the, the, the ability to go back to that version and make those changes again. I have a few artists in mind who always like to go back to previous versions and say, hey, I really like the way you mix that in version two. Can you just take the way, you know, take the ad lib effects and put that into the latest version. And all I have to do is go back into version two, copy and paste. I don't have to go back and listen to it and try to figure out exactly what I did and match it. I just I could just grab it literally exactly the way that it was in that version. All right, so cancel. Let me zoom back out. Okay, last thing. Uh, the way Ableton Live exports stuff. It exports based on your selection. So if I have just this clip selected, it's going to export. You see these markers right here? It's going to export from there to there. So that's a small amount of time that it's exporting. So I really like to create these warp markers. Anywhere you click, you can click set over here. I'm going to rename that and I'm going to set that to start. Let's see, I already have one here, but I don't need it. So I would put that at the start and then I have one that says end. That way I always know exactly what sounds good in the beginning and the ending. Make sure you test these to make sure that that does sound good as a start. And make sure it does sound good as, as an end and it fades out. Or cold stop, however you have it. That sounds good for the end. Okay, so I can make this selection from start to end. Uh, and then shift command R lets me export. Just fast key commands, it's faster than finding it in the, in the options menu, especially if you're working at a very fast pace. Normally, I would just do an MP3. It's a high-quality MP3. PCM would just be for Wave, AIFF, or FLAC. Okay, normal is just 44.1, 16-bit. Uh, you can dither if you feel like it. Okay, uh, now we're going to jump to sends and returns, how sends and returns work. 